So we move on here then to just kind of a uh, summarized definition of what earned value management is, and you can see that on the slide. Um, some of the key features of now adopting this approach, which is this independent way of statusing your in-process work, is that we begin to um, state the value of the work completed in terms of dollars. That will be important for us um, because we all know that project management is, is a, a game of trade-off. Trade-off analysis between technical performance, cost performance, and schedule performance. And earned value provides us a mechanism to bring the three of them together because we know that decisions are not independently going to affect one of the three, but typically all of the three as we relate it to a particular scope of work. We begin now to understand that we can use efficiency as a way to better forecast what resources we need to finish, what time we need to finish. We can better enable the multiple consideration of both technical schedule and cost goals together in our decision making by having these set of metrics that allow us to compare and do the trade-off. And then the last point I'd like to make here is that this particular approach is not something that's ill-defined or subject to interpretation. It's actually governed by an industry standard, and that is uh, the American National Standards Institute ANSI EIA 748 is the name of the document. It was developed in 1998 uh, by an uh, industry group. Um, which I was uh, very privileged to support and be a part of. Uh, and that earned value standard is kind of a, a definition of 32 characteristics or 32 guidelines of what comprises a program management approach that uses earned value management. So again, the important point here is that it is a technique within the broader discipline of program management. Uh, that basically uses this independent objective way of statusing and process work and provides for us uh, a quantification of how much work has been done that we can then compare and contrast to what did we promise to do and what resources do, did we use in order to accomplish that work. Now, as I said before, uh, even in the traditional approach, program manager's job is really, I like to think of it as being a trade-off artist. He's trying to simultaneously manage schedule, cost, and technical performance. And we reflect that here as a triangle. Uh, we call it the priority triangle because we would like our customer to actually tell us what's most important. Um, you know, I've used the uh, experience I once had where as a program manager working for a customer, uh, very demanding, uh, asked me to simultaneously optimize all three of these performance goals, schedule, cost, and tactical. Um, and at that point, you know, I can either disappoint him now or disappoint him later, so I figured the best thing to do would be disappoint him now, so I penned my letter of resignation and uh, really forced the issue in terms of the customer selecting, uh, at least in some priority, which of these goals are most important. Because as we go forward, we know we're going to be put in situations where we're going to have to make a decision that trades off one for the other. We might decide to approve overtime in order to recover schedule. We might relax a technical specification in order to reduce uh, an over budget situation. Uh, these three are intrinsically related, and you have to manage in a way that understands that and appreciates that. Well, as the program manager, if you're using a unit of measure, which is unique to each of these performance goals, so in this case, schedule, of course, is days, weeks, months, cost, dollars, technical, well, technical could be almost anything. Could be milliseconds of transmission delay if I'm building a transmitter. Could be pounds per square inch of roadbed support if I'm building a bridge. Uh, the unit of measure for technical uh, varies as widely as uh, goals and objectives of the program. But the point being is, how do you do a trade-off analysis if your unit of measure and your, your point of comparison between the three is completely different? What the earned value approach does is it dollarizes each of these performance dimensions. 
So now we have a common unit of measure that facilitates that trade-off analysis that the project manager is doing all of the time. So we have a dollarized representation of the schedule in terms of it standing for representing time. We have a dollarized representation for the volume of work or the scope of work, which of course presumes some level of quality or, or, or technical specification that must be met in order to uh, take credit for that work. And now we can begin to do this trade-off analysis in a much more facilitated way by having this common unit of measure. And that's the mechanism by which we are able to better integrate cost, schedule, and technical performance uh, as we move forward. Now the basic steps then that we would employ, and you'll not be surprised here at all because it really is very consistent with a good, consistent discipline program management approach. Um, of course, we are going to define our work using a work breakdown structure. Uh, we're going to break it down into more manageable, discrete pieces of work, which we then will assign uh, responsibility for. As I said before, rather than using one of the three evils, we are going to objectively assess our progress using those earned value methods that I spoke about earlier. Um, we defined the characteristics of those methods, but we didn't actually uh, lay out for you here at this introductory webinar uh, what the methods are. Um, but there are a number of them that are available to you to select based on the type of work, based on the duration of the work, uh, based on the risk associated with the work to get you uh, a more uh, quantified result in terms of how much work has been done that does not rely on uh, one of the three evils that I spoke about before. Okay, once we know how much work has been done, we can begin to focus on what we think of as the significant variances or differences. So there are two that are going to uh, pop up. One is a, a schedule variance, another is going to be a cost variance. The schedule variance is simply what did we promise to do in terms of our work plan and how much work did we actually complete. And the cost variance is going to be uh, how much work did we accomplish compared to the resources we actually used to get that work done. We're no longer going to use the comparison to a spend plan because in fact, that's all that is. It's a spend plan. It's a, it's a projected budget. It is really not something that is a direct measure of the work. Um, so the variances we're going to look at here are those that start from how much work has been accomplished. And of course, that's because we're using an earned value approach. Now, I don't want to ignore this word significant. We're not going to analyze all variances, only those that are significant and go beyond what we think of as a certain threshold. Um, we have the latitude within our program system, our management system, to define what that threshold is. Uh, so what might be significant in an R&D project may not be significant in a production manufacturing project. So you have the ability to set that threshold as appropriate. We're clearly going to be assessing project impacts. Uh, within our particular scope of work, we're using these now core metrics to be able to understand and forecast and project and what is going to be the impact of other areas of the project. We're going to use corrective action planning to try and come up with, when we do have a significant variance, what can we do differently compared to the original plan in trying to recover schedule or improve our cost performance. And of course, we're always going to be sharing with all elements of our project team, management, oversight, and the customer, what do we think we need to finish? What resources do we need to finish? What time do we need to finish? This is forecasting. And we think that the earned value approach gives us some significant tools to improve our forecasting ability. Throughout, we will be able to summarize our data. We're going to use our work breakdown structure to do that primarily uh, for purposes of sharing status and information with all of our stakeholders within the project. So what I'd like to do now is just uh, uh, show you here graphically some, what some of these um, uh, uh, new elements to a program management approach enabled by earned value provides for us. You can see that we're now taking a program with our resources on the y-axis and our timeline on the x-axis. 
So we're going to lay in our plan. There's our plan value. This is the time phased work plan. Uh, we use our schedule and our cost estimate as inputs to lay this out. And over and above that, we will have a budget associated with potential work that may have to be performed. Um, it is known work, but it's unknown when and if we'll need to do it because it's driven by risk. But we lay that on top. It's outside of our original plan. It's available to us within our total program, but we're not quite sure uh, where to plan it in, so it's not actually incorporated into the baseline. So just for purpose of illustration, we have a time now. And as I said before, we're going to use an independent objective method for determining how much work has been done. That's our earned value. Here you can see we've laid that in compared to the plan, and the first comparison point is there. That tells us what did we promise to do, that's the plan value. What, how much work did we actually perform, that's our earned value, and the difference is what we refer to as the schedule variance. So you'll see here the schedule variance is expressed in terms of dollars, because that's what's on the y-axis. And we're looking probably at somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, let's say, $100, uh, $100 in terms of the schedule variance. Well, you might ask yourself the question, what would be an equivalent time variance associated with that earned value schedule variance? Well, one quick and dirty way to do it, uh, graphically at least, is to drop a horizontal back to your plan value line, drop a vertical to your timeline, and now you can see that roughly 100 uh, units of resources in this particular example equates to about a difference of three weeks. Now again, this is a rough order magnitude approach. There are some more sophisticated approaches that are um, more reliable and have greater fidelity. Um, I would just say to you that in terms of really understanding what the time variance is, you have a schedule. You need to use the schedule. And so we're not replacing the schedule in that sense. We're just trying to here represent a quantification, if you will, of how much work was planned compared to how much work was actually accomplished. And that difference represents our schedule variance. Now we can look at our work plan going forward. And you can see here we're projecting out a completion that goes beyond uh, the original plan. That represents our schedule slip. In addition, as we always do, we track our resource consumption or actual cost. That's the red line. And you can see that we're consuming more resources than the work that we actually accomplished. And that comparison is what we refer to as our cost variance. So we're no longer comparing our actual cost to our budget. We're comparing our actual cost to how much work we got done for those resources that were used. A projection of our actual cost is the future resources we will need in order to complete the project, and that gives us our estimate at complete. And you can see we can compare that estimate at complete to the original budget, the BAC, and that gives us an at complete variance. And of course, the schedule slip and the at complete variance are usually driven by risk. In this case, we've encountered more risk than we even anticipated and had reserved for in the management reserve account. So again, a nice uh, quick graphical way to see how some of the concepts that now are available to us using an earned value approach might be uh, a way to support our forecasting and improve our decisions. As we begin to further define what is earned value, um, here we're just giving you a view of what the management system would look like. And if you could almost take the whole top stripe area here, that basically are the business processes and supporting applications that are going to be resident within the program office. So we're going to be using things to structure our work, the work breakdown structure, to define and structure the resources we will use, our organization breakdown structure, to develop our schedules, to put our resource plans together, our cost estimate, to effectively develop our original plan. 
And when we take a snapshot of that, we establish that baseline and we memorize it in some type of a database. Now we begin to delegate work. We have a number of different performing organizations that can be involved in our program, from prime and subcontractors to other customer or government organizations. Perhaps even our own organization may be directly responsible for executing some of the work. And then there are other support contractors that have somewhat of a niche role um, here. And so we're authorizing the work. Of course, if it's through an external organization, that's via a contract. If it's internally, we're going to use some type of project organization or delegation of responsibility to ensure that scope, schedule, and budget are understood and agreed to. But in essence, all of these performing organizations are going to be reporting back to us with technical status as well as resource consumption information. And we're going to now compare and contrast that in our earned value database in order to develop these variances in order to calculate the efficiencies that we will use to put forward our decisions going forward, our corrective action plans, our impact analysis, and then of course eventually our formal reporting up to a customer in terms of when we will finish and are we on target in terms of schedule and cost.